What is up guys? So I didn't have anything lined up for what I would consider a worthwhile video this week, but I wanted to get something up anyway. And since I'm completely out flat here in the shop this week, I figured I might as well get some content out to you guys and kind of show you what I'm up to. We are home from Tuner Evo, Philadelphia. Made it home with no issues, uh, unlike the drive up, which you guys saw in the last episode, lost a wheel cylinder in the back of the OBS Ford and took absolutely forever to get the thing fixed, just trying to figure out where exactly the problem was. So the drive home, thankfully, was uneventful. The truck performed flawlessly. Cruise control set at 75, uh, hauling both cars and uh, the AC blowing cold. So super stoked on the truck um, until the next issue comes along. Uh, the fact that I can haul the Corvair and the 700 on a steel trailer, set the cruise control at 75 with the AC cranked and be comfortable uh, without pushing the truck too hard is amazing. Because as I mentioned in the last episode, the OBS Fords, especially the Aeronoses, are some of my favorite trucks. My grandfather, my father, and my uncles have all had those trucks in their fleets uh, when those trucks were new. So the 7.3 V8 diesel is like the sound of that motor is ingrained in my childhood memory. So every time I start that truck, I just feel like a kid again. So I, I love that truck to death. But we're home, haven't really detailed the cars. I mean, you can't really detail too much, but haven't cleaned up the windows or just kind of pressure wash them down from the road grime. Uh, wheels are filthy. We hit lots of rain on the way home. So everything got really caked in road grime. This past week has been a blitz week because I'm headed to the United Kingdom headed back to England uh, for the first time since 2020 hit. Uh, any of you guys who know me know that this is an annual trip. I head overseas, I go over to Europe once a summer, sometimes even twice a year uh, to hang out with friends, go to car shows. It's been a part of my life for the last seven or eight years now. And then when 2020 hit, it stopped everything. So since 2020, this is my first trip back overseas and I have been chomping at the bit to get over and see my friends in Europe. Normally the trip is in June for Players Classic as Jay and Carl and all the Players guys are good friends of mine. But this time it's for the Roll Hard uh, Bister Heritage Show. And Roll Hard is run by my friend Dan, Johnny, Matt, and a handful of other good friends of mine. And I have not had a chance to get over there for their show yet. We're working together with some aspects of the show that I'm super excited about, as well as making some exclusive merchandise, some Ludwig's Garage Roll Hard collaboration merchandise. As you guys can see, I've got a stack of leather all cut here, a couple of the logos on it. And this is the result. Let's see if I can't show you guys. So it's a genuine black leather loop keyring. It's got the Ludwig's Garage logo on one side and the Roll Hard logo on the other with black rivets and black split rings. So triple black, genuine leather loop key ring. I'm making 50 of these and these will be available at the show. I might have them at the Roll Hard stand. So what I'm doing now is I, I have laser cut these on the machine. Uh, I've buffed all their edges, I've washed them and now they're ready to be assembled. So probably what I'll do in this episode is I will rivet them all together you guys can kind of see how I put those together. Well, I just got all 50 of the Ludwig's Garage Roll Hard leather loop key rings done so i'm going to package these up these will be ready to go this is my day job making uh, leather wood and acrylic merchandise goods for automotive and beyond businesses so that's my day gig so i'm working on that today trying to get that done we leave in three days for england so it's kind of a frantic rush to get everything done as well as a few commission jobs get the roll hard stuff done and get packed up but also this trip to england i am bringing my bike most of you guys may know that I rode freestyle BMX professionally for almost 10 years through my late teens into my mid to late 20s. And throughout all my travels riding BMX full time, um, I had never gone to England to ride. So 
going to incorporate this into the trip and I'm, I'm super excited about it because there's a handful of spots in Bristol and Cardiff that I want to ride that I've never had the chance to ride yet. The last company I rode for was a company called Deco and that's owned by Chad DeGroot. And Chad DeGroote is a legendary Flatland BMX rider. When I was basically starting out in BMX in my teenage years, Chad DeGroote was one of my favorite riders. So as fate would have it, to become friends with him and ride for some of his companies was a dream come true. So that was one of the last companies I rode for. Still have many Deco parts on my bike. The seat, the pedals, pegs, uh, the handlebars, grips, the forks are Deco. And what's crazy is a handful of these components are prototype Deco parts from 2010 when I first started riding for Deco. I was riding a Deco frame, but all these years later, almost 10 years later, after you know not riding for companies anymore, not riding at all, really, I have rebuilt my signature frame back up. And I've talked about this in a couple episodes back a couple years ago, but if you're new to the channel, I rode for a company called Versa in 2008, and I had the opportunity to design and release a signature frame. And that frame was unveiled at Interbike in Las Vegas in 2008. I actually have like a quarter photo, quarter page photo in BMX Plus Magazine holding this frame uh, as it's release. I tried to incorporate a handful of geometry design into this frame that we didn't see in street frames yet. And one of those things were uh, you could option it with no brake mounts at all. So if you were riding with no brakes, uh, you could get the frame with no brake mounts or you could get them with removable mounts. But notably, it had a 76 degree head tube, which was really steep for a street frame. It had, I think, a nine inch standover, eight and a half, I can't remember, but as, a, as you can see, it's a very compact frame. Everything's real tight, real compact. It doesn't stand up real tall. The rear end was, I think, a 13.2 inch slammed rear end. The uh, chain and seat stays were real tight. All of this geometry was to basically allow for spins and nose wheelies to be easier. I did a lot of front wheel tricks. So basically the low standover allowed for whiplashes or tail whip tricks to be out of your way for your feet to be coming back over the frame to get back to your pedals. <laughs> that was so good, I saw that. Oh. <laughs> Yes, yes, dude. Oh. The steep head tube and short rear end was to get your wheelbase real tight together, which allowed for better nose wheelie tricks and spins. And I also run a real short crank arm. And this will, if you ride BMX, this will blow your mind. These are 145 millimeter crank arms. And if you don't ride BMX, normally they're 180 to 175, which are pretty long. Because of how short this wheelbase is and how short the stays are, when your foot's on your pedal, sometimes your, your peg is real close to your heel. And up front, if you're doing bar spin tricks, which I did a lot of, uh, the front of your shoe could hit your tire on the way around. So I ride a minuscule 145 millimeter crank arm with such a short compact setup. It's a 20.5 inch top tube. So it's really kind of like a normal sized frame, just a real compact wheelbase setup.
All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Just some prep work for England uh, for just under two weeks heading over there. Bike bag is packed up. I've left plenty of space for other stuff. I'm going to probably get much more stuff crammed in there. But for now, the bike is torn down. It's all packed away. I've got all my tools, pegs, components. Everything's good to go and uh, fits in there real nice. And the best part about this bag is the fact that it's got wheels. And I was traveling with my BMX bike full time between 2003 and 2010. And many of those years, we did not have a bike specific bag for BMX bikes. And it was horrible transporting my BMX bike in a wakeboard bag that did not have wheels and it had a shoulder strap or just carry straps. And having to run clear across LAX, being late for a flight or something like that was always just the absolute worst. I've traveled with this bag already once before and it's been a dream being able to pull it on wheels across an airport. So really excited about that. It's gonna make that much easier. Aside from being excited about this trip, I am just so excited to bring my bike over and get a chance to session with some good friends of mine from England and kind of indulge in a passion of mine that was such a huge part of my life for such a long time. Well, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode from England.